What's going on, everyone? So I'm going to attempt to show you what I personally look for. Again, you know, I can't really record myself trading because I trade on my phone 100% uh, of the time, and <laughs> it wouldn't be much fun to look at. Um, but I will go over what I look for, though, when I am scanning over stuff, just so maybe you can get some of my thought process and um, just try to get a lot of the confusion out of your head because I know it's a lot, but you can hone in on what works for you, your personality, you know, your, uh, your style, so to speak, because there is different styles to play, especially if you're trading options. I mean, they call them options for a reason because you have options. Um, you just have to learn what those options are and you have to learn when to best utilize them. Um, and you know, a lot of that can only come through practice in the field. So Anyways, I'm going to attempt this real quick. It's going to be very brief. This is a stock chart. It doesn't matter what it is because, you know, when I'm looking for stocks, it doesn't matter. I'm looking for characteristics of things that I know work. And two of those major things are going to be the RSI and the MACD as technical indicators. Those are really the only two um, that I like to use as, as far as subcharts. And then on the chart itself, I really like to take advantage of gaps to identify support resistance levels. And um, that really, really helps when trying to, uh, like if you if you come back to a play like two weeks later and you have the gap marked, you'll remember and it will act as a very nice support line or resistance line, depending on the situation. But the MACD, the reason why, when I look at the MACD, what do you see? Whoops. You see a green banana going up and on the other end, red going down. It's literally yin yang going up the signal line and the MACD line, which really you don't really need to pay attention to. I don't even pay attention to the, the numerical values whatsoever, unless I'm, I'm trying to scan for, you know, imminent crosses programmatically. But as far as the shape and what I'm looking at, when I look at the chart, it's just the shape. I'm only looking at shapes when I'm looking at the chart, not numbers, not values, not where this is or that is. I'm only looking at shapes that I either have as an indicator, which is always going to be the MACD or RSI, or I'm going to be looking at the chart, the main chart with the gap lines that I've drawn, um, which again, act as very helpful support resistance. So, and this is for any chart. Now, it doesn't matter which time frame either, because that time frame, I'm going to go to a real chart now. Um, let's zoom in. This is Baidu, by the way. This is the one hour. So if we go to the day, it's the same it's the same thing, right? The only difference when you're switching time frames is the amount of time or the decision making when you're in a play, um, you know, with your own money. So like if you're trading to make profit today, but you buy a contract that expires three weeks from now, then really the decisions made today aren't too critical as if, you know, you were playing a zero DTE contract or something, then your decisions would be critical. So obviously the further out you play with options, the more time you are buying yourself to strategize, manage your position, um, you know, scale in however you want to play it. You're buying the time to allow yourself to do that. If you go short term, you are not um, getting all that time. And instead, you're getting a much cheaper price for a much less valuable option because expiration is soon. And that's basically how the time factor works. And it's very important when trying to play options, because even if you're right in the direction, you have to be right at the right time. If you're right, um, you know, two hours uh, too late, it could be a huge difference because, you know, when it goes against you in options, it uh, you can lose value very, very quickly, especially if it expires soon. So you always want to make sure you're aware of what you're playing. If you're playing short term, you have to monitor your shit or set up some kind of stop loss or other mechanism to make sure you don't get screwed um, while trading. And hopefully I have the Discord muted. Okay, thank God. <laughs> so there's no beeping. Thank goodness. Anyways, but yeah, but as far as what I'm looking at, it's the same thing. Whether it's Baidu or let's just do another random style. Let's just do Mara. It's the same thing. I want to see this about the cross. I want to see this somewhere around the oversold mark, which is 30, or the overbought mark, which is 70. If it's somewhere in the middle, I, I usually don't even pay attention to it, which I know that there is some strategies out there that likely utilize that. But me personally, and that's the thing about this, it fits different people, different strategies work for different people. 
Uh, for me, I like to look at patterns. I like to look at consistent patterns that work, that I know work based off of what I've seen, what I've traded, uh, etc. So when the RSI is oversold, most always it corrects and goes up. What I like to see is when that happens, paired up with the MACD. So if you have a RSI that's oversold and a MACD that's about to cross bullish, that's what I want to see. If you have a MACD that's oversold or overbought rather, and a MACD that's about to cross bearish, that's exactly what I want to see. So really this chart here, zooming in more at the bottom here, this whole section here is irrelevant to me. I would, I would not even pay attention to it until it gets up to about here. And really when it crosses that line is when it really catches my eye. But sometimes, you know, you can get away with uh, letting it go just shy of the line to get a nice uh, momentum catch. But it really works well when paired with this MACD. And that's all I'm looking at. And again, I usually don't do this on my computer. I do it on my phone. So, you know, on the phone, it, it looks a little bit different, I guess, as far as the granularity. But it's the same concept. You're just looking for the same thing. Is this shape there? Is it about the cross? And is the RSI also overbought with this shape? And on the other side of the spectrum, is the shape about the cross to the upside? And is the RSI, you know, near the bottom rather than the top? And that's the same way every time. Now, when it comes to gaps, um, let me turn all this indicator shit off real quick. Um, let me turn off the MACD just to get a full chart. And then I'll add back in the RSI MACD at the end. But anyways, so you want to make sure you're looking at gaps, right? Whether you have a charting mechanism for gaps or your brokerage app allows you to do it, I would find some way to mark gaps. And what gaps are is basically void in price action. And there's a lot of theory surrounding this. Um, when Whenever there's a void in price action, you know, these markets run off of algorithms and, um, you know, things that like to be trained on data. And when there's a void in said data, that's a potential issue for the efficient market hypothesis, you know, that says incomplete data can't be perfect data. So you must have all of the data to have a perfect system, perfect model, whatever you want to call it. Whenever there's voids in price action, um, you know, theoretically speaking, and this is all theory at this point, um, it's not good for the algorithm. It, it's, you know, eventually it wants to fill those gaps to get price discovery in those areas where there was not any data collected. But anyways, just simply, you know, you can just draw a, uh, well, I like to use rays, ray lines, not horizontal, because rays you can actually determine and remember later on where the gap started. So let's go ahead and mark this here. Why isn't it working? Drawing mode ray. It's not letting me draw, man. Horizontal ray. Interesting. Is this locked or something? Is there a lock button on here? Of course. Well, anyway, maybe the, let me try the one hour, maybe. No, that's weird. It should be working. Do, let's see, drawings, hide, no, stay in drawing mode. Okay, there we go. All right, so, sorry about that. So, what I like to do is I take the ray, let's go back to the daily real quick, and you just mark these uh, these gaps where they are, and we'll go to the ray, and we'll mark it here where this one started. You just want to make sure you get it at zero degrees so it doesn't mess up when it gets further down the line. Um, let's see here. There we go. And then I like to lock it in place. And if, okay, so if the gap's below the current price, I like to mark it green as uh, support. If it's above the current price, I like to mark it resistance or red. So this one here, I only marked the top of the gap because the price is currently above the gap. So I don't feel the need to gap or chart both of them. So I only use the top of uh, up gaps in the bottom of down gaps. Now, what do I mean by that? So let me scroll back and try to find a other gap that we can measure. A lot of these have filled recently. Here's one right here. So this one right now is above the current price. 
So what we're going to do is I'm going to mark this with another ray, and I'm going to do the bottom of this up gap as opposed to the top of the other gap that I just did. So get it to zero, lock it in, and then I'll keep this one red, and then I'll zoom out, and I'll only delete this, this line here that I had from a while ago. And basically, you know, there's our our line right there. And now what's interesting about this is that now that we have our, our resistance right there and our support right here, we can just leave that here. This line will never disappear. So we can leave this here, you know, go on to another stock, come back later. We'll, we'll remember it. And a lot of the times, like, and this has saved me a lot of times, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be in a play and you know, you don't know when to sell, you know, you'll get a nice run and you'll be up like 40%, but you don't know if you should hold a little bit longer or just go ahead and take the profit. Well, you know, sometimes you can go look and then you, you'll be right at one of those lines and, you know, it could be confirmation for you to get out and take your profit and save yourself. So that's happened to me a few times. But uh, the, the trick is, though, is we did this on the daily. So if you go down actually to the hour, you can get a tighter window of support resistance by using lower time frames in some cases. Like right here, we can do this one which is currently below the current price. We're going to mark it with a green line. Get it to zero faster. I like to zoom out a little bit. They should allow you to do this, you know, where you can just set it. We're going to do this green. And then let's try to find another up gap to get a, a tighter resistance. Because again, all, all these time frames are just all, it's all relative. It's all relative. There's got to be one up here somewhere. There's always one. There's always one. Maybe not. No, maybe that is the closest one. But we're only on the hour, though. So let's go to the 30 minute. Uh, you know, you never know. I like to go all the way down to the five, sometimes the one if you have to. Okay, so there's there's a closer one. Then actually, that's the same one. Just it's off a little bit because we went down in the time frame. So we'll leave that alone. And then there's got to be another one. Sometimes they're like a penny wide. Maybe I did a bad example because this is a uh, Mara. Yeah, that red one could be the, the closest one as far as, you know, the higher time frames. Wow, it may just well be. Interesting. You check spy do the same thing and it's the same process right like this one is from the 12th so we could just go ahead and mark this we're on the 30 minute so we're gonna mark this with support we'll do here with support And where's our resistance at? It's been a nice run. <laughs> Chaotic. I mean, a lot of fuckery going on with the uh, SPX lately. But anyways, you get the point. Gapping or charting these gaps is very helpful when it comes to support resistance. So, and that's the point of these feeds, right? Because we have a lot of them, right? And I know it's confusing, but the point of all of it is so that you can learn whichever one that you want to use, and then you can basically combine them together and, you know, see what works best. Like, and, you know, this is an example of the, of the new feed that I was talking about earlier, uh, the cost distribution play where, you know, 98% plus are profiting, which oftentimes, a lot of the times, more often than not, will indicate some form of a reversal coming through. And then on the feed itself, you have a RSI snapshot where you get a minute, hour, day, week, month, quarter, and year. Quick snapshot of the RSI. If it's bearish, you got a bear emoji, meaning it's overbought. If it's oversold, you got a bull emoji. Um, we may have some examples of that. Yeah, it's right here. And you'll notice, like, the thing that you need to start noticing is that you'll notice when the cost distribution is above 98%, what do you see? You see oversold RSI. Or God damn it. I always get the backwards. Overbought RSI. When you see cost distribution below 
two percent. God damn it, I need to fix that feed. It <laughs> that should say that have two percent or less of players profiting. I'll fix that. Um, but yeah, but you get it right. I mean, and I need to fix the chart too. So I need to fix a chart because theoretically, when I do fix the chart for the O2 uh, feeds, you should see the opposite here. You should see these candles near support instead of resistance, which is what's interesting because you see bullish RSI values whenever the cost is below 2% and you see bearish when it's above, you know, the bearish thresholds of RSI. And that's when you can start adding and mixing these things together. And then you can go into things like fire sale and see like, all right, WDC has 75% of the volume was uh, sell volume today. And then you could go plug in, the, in a chart that go to WDC, take a look. And holy balls, that when did this happen? That happened today uh, at the very end. That's fuckery right there. And that's what they do, right? They, uh, they short it in the morning and they cover it in, in the afternoon or vice versa. But yeah, same, same logic to any chart, MACD, RSI, GAPS. Let me go back to uh, where were we on originally? Baidu, right? We'll go we'll go here and let me go back to the daily. And you see, and these are old gaps. For example, like right here, I drew these a long time ago, and you know it, they they stay true. But uh, you know, you bring back in the uh, MACD and RSI. Let me go and get the indicators. MACD RSI. And you go to the daily and one hour. These are the two, you know, of my favorite time frames I like to trade on is the one hour and the daily. Um, anything less than that, I usually make bad decisions because I can't. I don't have a, you know that high of attention span to to stay focused on one trade that long. I'll make bad mistakes. But yeah, I mean, these are the things I look for: gaps, MACD, RSI in the options chain. I'm looking at the IV. Is it high? Is it low? And when I say high or low, really the only way to measure that is to use IV percentile which uh, we used to have, but again, now that we're poor, <laughs> we had to cut some shit, but uh, nonetheless, hopefully we'll be able to get that back at some point once, uh, you know, daddy hits a, a home run here soon. But yeah, you just try to simplify it. Don't think about everything at once. Take pieces of what you know, put it together, and then you'll you'll be surprised at what you'll you'll find, especially when you paper trade some of these ideas. But yeah, man, I mean, it's not... It's not too complicated if you if you don't make it too complicated. That's all I look at. That's it. I'm doing that same process over and over and over and over again, on, you know, and then working on these feeds in the background and, you know, doing that kind of shit. And that's it. And looking at the IV and studying, you know, macroeconomics and all these developments coming out. That's it. That's all I do. Other than that, you know, I'm just waiting to hit it. Um, and the good news is, is that, Although I've left more than you know more money on the table this year than I probably ever could have imagined, the good news is that you know I did that because before you know I was just getting my ass kicked and now it's like holy fuck like there's money on the table that means there's money I can take we just gotta learn how to execute on it we have everything we need to do it we just gotta execute on it that's it.